So let's do something uh, simple to start off with on these, uh, you know, factoring higher degree polynomials than just degree two, right? So let's say we want to factor the following polynomial. So the question would be, they would be asking you to factor this polynomial, this x cubed minus one. Now, there are formulas for this, just like there are formulas for factoring um, quadratic functions, the quadratic formula. But we're not going to use the formula to factor this, right? We're going to use synthetic division because it's going to work um, on all possible, all polynomials that have, you know, have factors that exist in the real number set, right? Or at least as part of uh, the rational numbers, integers that we have, right? Things that factor out simply. So what we're gonna do to factor this guy is, we're gonna look at the last term and the coefficient in front of the highest power, right? The last term, the possible factors of one is just plus or minus one. The possible factors of negative three, or the one here is just plus or minus one. So possible factors of this is just gonna be plus or minus one that we're gonna try out. Now, if those didn't work out, then you're gonna use, have to use a calculator or go to the formula and try to figure this out. But, you know, we came up with this question and we already know, I already know one of these is gonna work. So let's try possible factors is gonna be plus or minus one. And this is x cubed going down to a constant and we have to put everything in descending order, right? But we're missing the x squared term and we're missing the x term. So what we're gonna do is put place markers for the x squared term and the x term. So let's lay out the division statement here or the synthetic division statement here, right? Or the synthetic division form here. That way you can see how it all lays out and then we're gonna go ahead and do the synthetic division. So the possible factors of this polynomial are gonna be plus or minus one divided by plus or minus one, which is just really plus or minus one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try out x is equal to one, which means x minus one. We're gonna see if x minus one is a possible factor of this, right? And what we did when we laid it out in the synthetic division form, we put in place markers for x to the power of two and x to the power of one, right? Because we're missing those terms. So that's one and then zero x squared plus zero x minus one, right? And what we're gonna do is just go through the synthetic division part. So the one comes down here, one multiplies one, comes up here, you add those guys, whatever the result is comes here, multiplied by one again, comes up here. So we're just doing a zigzag, ding, 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 ding. So again, what we did was brought the one, multiply one times one, one, add these guys together, one, multiply one times one, one, Add these guys together, you get one. Multiply one times one, one. Negative one plus one, zero, right? That way, we know that x, x minus one is a factor of this top guy. So right away, we know that x minus one is a factor of this guy because our remainder is equal to zero. What we have as the end result here, we just took an x cubed and divided an x from it, right? So our end result here is that's one x squared plus one x plus one. If any of these terms were zero, it would just be a place marker for the missing x term, right? So if this guy was zero, your factor here would have been x squared plus one, right? Because this guy would be missing, but it's not. So we're gonna fill in the x terms so you know what it looks like. That's the polynomial that we get, the quotient that we get when we take x minus one divided into that, if we're thinking about a division, right? But what we're looking for here, the question for this guy would have been factor this. So what we have right now, this guy factored, right now we've taken it down to x minus one times this whole thing, x squared plus x minus one. Now, we're gonna have to try to factor this further, right? We can't use uh, simple, simple, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, simple, uh, simple trinomial factoring because we don't know two numbers that multiply to give you negative one and add to give you one, right? And we can't use complex trinomial factoring because, you know, that's just a one there, right? We don't need it. So what we're gonna have to use for this guy is to use the quadratic formula, right? Because, you know, top of my head, I can't think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative one and add to give you one. So we're gonna use the quadratic formula, but we, before we use the quadratic formula, we're gonna look at the discriminant to see if it even has any factors. And the discriminant, if you remember from the quadratic formula section, is b squared minus four ac 
uh, b squared minus 4ac, right? So if it's, got, if it's equal to zero, it's got one real root, or ide two identical roots, right? If it's greater than zero, it's got two real roots, and if it's less than zero, it's got no real roots, right? So let's take a look at the discriminant before we go ahead and do the whole, you know, lay out the quadratic formula. So the discriminant for this is going to be b squared minus 4ac, right? Just did a correction here because that shouldn't have been negative one. It should have been positive one, right? So that's x squared plus x plus one, right? So our a is equal to one, our b is equal to one, and our c is equal to one. If we subbed it in into the discriminant, this is what we're going to end up getting. So we sub in a, b, and c into discriminant. We're going to get 1 minus 4 times 1 times 1 times 1. So it's going to be 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Now that means the discriminant is less than 0. So, so this guy has no real roots. So we're stuck. So possible factors of this guy is just going to be x minus 1 times this. And we factored as far as we can. And in the real number realm, right? If we go to complex numbers, imaginary numbers, we can factor this further, but we're not there yet. We're just, we're just functioning right now in the real number realm. So this is where we would end up if they said, factor this guy. And we can write that down here. So if you're factoring this guy, right? This is as far as you can go, that's it. Because this guy you can't factor anymore in the real number realm, right? So we just factored something that's higher degree than power of two using synthetic division. And that's where we're really going with this because we want to be able to factor large polynomials. That way we can get their x-intercepts, right? And once we get their x-intercepts, we can begin to graph them, right? And what this is here is when x is equal to one, again, what we're talking about here is this is your x-intercept for this function. When x is equal to one, y is equal to zero. That's where this function crosses the x axis, right? So if you have your Cartesian coordinate system, if you graph this guy at x equals one, the function crosses the x-intercept, okay? Uh, let's go do one that's a little bit more complicated than this guy. 